Hi guys, welcome back to Ask Cam Doc. My name's Shane and I'm a final year medical student and neuroscience supervisor at the University of Cambridge. And this is how best to approach the start of medical school. <laughs> Right, so in this video I'm going to outline a five-step approach for you to follow right from the beginning of medical school. So let's start with step one. Step one is defining or finding out what the main key points and learning objectives are going to be. And this can be found right at the beginning of a lecture handout or a PowerPoint slide. And if it's not there then you can ask a supervisor, go ask the lecturer or you can even try asking people from the year above. This is very important to do because at the end of the day, especially with preclinicals, you're studying to pass an exam. And in order to do that, you need to figure out what the main major points and take home points are going to be. Because there's no point in wasting a lot of time focusing on the minute points and the minor points if they're never going to come up. So that would be one of the most important things to do right from the beginning. Right, so let's move on to step two. Step two is figuring out what the main or key resources are going to be. So I'm someone who likes simplicity and I like to basically minimize things. So what that means is I prefer to look at just one or two main resources rather than looking at 10 different ones. And that's worked out really well for me. But how do I go about figuring out what the most important resource is going to be or what the high yield resource is going to be? So a couple ways that I went about doing this. One way is essentially asking my supervisor, is, are there any good resources to use? Um, use? Use people from the year above, ask them questions. And by doing this, I figured out quite early on that especially with Cambridge exams, what they basically use to design the exams are the lecture handouts. So if I just use the lecture handouts, read it, learnt it very well, I'm going to do logically very well in the exams. And I basically did that and that reflected and I did do very well in my exams. So that would be one of the important things for you to do, basically figure out what the main resource you're going to be using. And often lecture handouts and PowerPoint slides are good enough and you know what the university provides you will have all the information and if the exam is going to be tailored to that then you know you don't really need to go anywhere else. However, there are unfortunately situations where things aren't explained very well in the lecture handout or things aren't explained very well in the PowerPoints. And in those situations, I would suggest going to websites like Osmosis, which have very good videos that are very well narrated, animated and describes and explains things very clearly and concisely. So basically, it's a very good use of your time to you know, watch a quick video in order to under understand that point, rather than going off and trying to find a textbook that explains it in very archaic and inaccessible language, basically. So that would be a good resource to go to. If that fails, of course, you have Wikipedia, which is, again, fantastic. Uh, you know, I've, I've gone there for many, many things, you know, even for when I was doing my degree. So Wikipedia works quite well. Of course, you have to be a bit careful because sometimes not all the information is as accurate as it should be. But more or less, it's, it's pretty much good enough. Um, failing that, then you might have to resort to a textbook, um, you know, get it from your library. I wouldn't really invest in any te textbooks unless you know, it was a very high yield textbook that's been recommended. Um, for example, in anatomy, Gray's Anatomy is a very important and very good textbook that has very good diagrams. And I use that basically to aid my visual learning as I went through my anatomy course. So that would be one textbook that I'd be happy spending, spending money on. So once you've established the main learning points and found the key resources that you're going to be using, it's now time to move on to step three and essentially put a plan of how you're going to tackle learning all of the content. Because it's important in order for you to do well to have an overarching plan because it's very easy to miss out something because you think it's not going to be important but lo and behold it comes up on the exams. So it's important to just sit for a moment and just write down all the main lecture topics that you need to learn. So I basically, I prefer to do this on a piece of paper. So I, you know, I'll, I'll look at all the subjects that I have to do, anatomy, biochemistry, pharmacology, etc. And then I'll write down what the main lectures are, or the main topics that I need to cover. And then I'd 
allocate a specific time. For example, Monday 5 to 6.30, I'm going to learn about um, the muscles in my upper lip, for example. Um, and by doing that, you have a plan. It will make you feel a lot more relaxed and comfortable because you know you're going to cover it at some point. And it will also help you keep track of things that you've covered and keep track of things that you need to cover in the future. So that brings us on to step four. Unfortunately, it's now time to get down to the real business and start learning the content. Several ways you can go about doing this. So what I ended up actually doing was kind of sitting in front of the piece of paper that was essentially the lecture handout. And instead of just writing notes, I just would read it, I would highlight certain points. Personally, I like highlighting, but apparently research shows that it doesn't really help out that much. But yeah, so I'd read to the end of the page and I'd stop and then I'll basically close my eyes and I would try to recall as best as possible the key points in that page. And once I had achieved an acceptable level of recall, let's say about 80 to 90 percent, I would then move on to the next page and I'd do the same. So that is essentially a process of active recall. And I would read this lecture handout and then I'll come revisit it at a later point say that month or next month or even next week or even at the end of the week depending on how new and fresh the content is or how used to the content I already am. So that process is essentially spaced repetition. So I have used active recall and spaced repetition to help me absorb a lot of the material especially the most mundane ones where you just you know need to memorize things like drug names in pharmacology and mechanism of action, etc. So that I did without actually knowing what the techniques were. So at the time I was doing active recall and space repetition without actually putting titles to that. You know, I, I was doing this because it was working for me, but I didn't really know the research behind it or why it was working. So personally, I would now recommend for you to go and watch Ali Abidal's YouTube video, which I will link and it basically runs through all the study tips that are available and suggests evidence and research-backed study tips that you should be using to help you memorize as much as possible and learn as best you can with essentially minimal effort. And that brings us on to step five. So step five is essentially figuring out what your exams are going to be and start doing practice exam questions. So, several places you can go to do that. The faculty website or your medical school website might have suggested past paper questions, past papers themselves, or you could ask people from the year above who might have resources similar to that, um, often in Dropboxes, etc. And it's important to get these resources early on and start doing exam questions and practice questions early because. Initially, you might feel, actually, you know what, I haven't got the knowledge, I don't really want to start doing exams, I'll save it to the end of the year. But if you do that, you're stopping yourself from doing several things. One is obviously, like I mentioned, you're studying to pass an exam. And if you've never got a feel for what the exam questions are going to be, how are you going to know that you are collecting this important information and you're absorbing the necessary details? So in order to do that, doing past exam questions are going to help you figure out what what the things they like to ask are and what the main points they want to pick up on. So it helps with that. Another thing is it helps you identify your strengths and weaknesses so you can tailor your revision and learning to make sure that you you know focus a bit more time on the things that you're finding a little bit more difficult and actually be feeling confident that you know what you've got this covered you know I'm answering those exam questions quite well. So that has been a quick run through of the five key steps that you need to follow right from the beginning of medical school. However, it also applies to any stage of medical school and, you know, the general principles that we've talked about is going to hold you in good stead, regardless of what point in the medical school system you're in. So hopefully you guys have found this video very useful and if you have, please like, follow and share. Make sure as many medical students as possible finds out about what we're trying to do and that's it for me from today and I'll see you guys next time.